Well, welcome to HVAF's seventh annual Operation Alpha. We're going to give a few more minutes for our technically challenged to get in, but people want to go around and share their poison, their drink tonight, or what cigars they're smoking. We can do a little bit of that, or what you guys thought of the game. We can just chit chat for a few minutes while we wait for everyone to come in. Hi everyone, I'm Tammy Nelson, my husband, Dave. Hey. Um, I have <clears throat> four soldier bourbon. Nice. And I've got some Basil Hayden's Kentucky bourbon. Awesome. Thanks for hosting the event. I'm sure yeah. we're all gonna have a lot of fun. And where are you guys calling or coming in from? I was gonna say calling from. From, <laughs> from Greenwood. Awesome. No, you are, <laughs> Shy people tonight. Don't be shy, guys. Feel free to chat. I'm going to give it about two more minutes. Anybody watch the game tonight? And I'm Sarah for anyone that doesn't know I'm Sarah from Channel 13. How many people you guys got online today? Looks like uh, I can only like see four or five from my boy. Thirty-seven so far. That's awesome. <clears throat> yeah, it's like a little. I like this Zoom party. I hear that Operation Alpha is just like the best party ever every year. So well, yeah. I'm excited for next year when we can do this all in person. <laughs> for sure. Hi guys, I'm Mike Rodriguez, and here's my four roses. That's what I'm Ooh. sipping on tonight. Nice. Nice. <laughs> Cheers to everybody. Cheers. 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 Yeah, Brian Davis uh, from the east side. Evan Williams is my uh, choice this evening. Awesome. Awesome. Love it. And where are you joining from? Me? Yep. I'm joining from my home, my kitchen. Um, <laughs> I'm on the north side. Uh, 465 in Meridian, basically. <clears throat> Very cool. All right, well, I guess 7.33, we can get this started. So I'm Sarah Jones from Channel 13, and I am so excited to host this because it is all about our veterans, the people who keep America, America, and we're always forever grateful for them. And HVF does so much amazing work with homeless veterans and veterans that are at risk of homelessness. And we have to thank our sponsors tonight's event because they're the ones that are making this happen. And they're also the ones whose donations are going directly to helping the veterans that are at risk of homelessness or veterans who are homeless in our state, which it really shouldn't exist. It shouldn't be an issue, but it is. And HBO steps up and is trying to solve and fix that issue and problem. So overview for tonight. All right, and by the way, I'm going to give you a quick reminder. If you watch it in the speaker view, you'll be able to see the entire program as it's meant to be, and then you won't miss any of the slides or anything we're showing. And if you need to know how to do that, you can kind of go up where you see everyone's like little gallery at the top, and you'll see a little thing in the top right corner that says view. And if you click on that, and then you can go to the speaker view to see, see everything as it's meant to be. So we have a really fun night planned. Um, and I'm gonna wait for a minute because it's important that you guys see those sponsors. <clears throat> so yeah, these are all the people that are making tonight happen and um, their donations and their sponsorship goes directly to helping homeless veterans in Indiana. I heard someone clapping. We can all clap. <laughs> Definitely. That's awesome. Um, so they are the ones that are helping this all happen and help HVF to continue doing their amazing work. Um, so again, also watch in speaker's view. Does anybody have any questions on how to do that? Or is everyone heard before? Everyone's good? Okay. Um, so we have this amazing fun night planned, supporting homeless and at-risk veterans. We're gonna start with two raffle giveaways and then a cigar with the CEO, Brian Copes. 
updates on how HBF has helped veterans impacted during the COVID pandemic. And of course, we couldn't have Operation Alpha without the traditional grog ceremony. So we also have a couple special guest appearances tonight. Okay. And we'll wrap up the evening with what everyone is waiting for, the whiskey and cigar pulls. So let's start off the night with a special with a special message from our First Lady, Janet Holcomb. Hi, I'm Indiana First Lady Janet Holcomb, and I am pleased to join you this evening for your event, Operation Alpha. We're sorry that the original event had to be postponed due to COVID, but we're so glad that everyone is joining this evening, even from as far as Texas. Helping veterans and families does so much for our retired military personnel. Thank you for all you do. We really value veterans and service men and women here in Indiana, and we do all we can to attract retiring veterans to the state, as well as supporting the veterans who are already here along with their families. Thank you for all that you're doing to help homeless and at-risk veterans here in Indiana. That was awesome to hear from our First Lady. And we know that Indiana is a state that veterans, you guys make this place a home. And it's, you know, there's no base here, but it still feels very much like a home. And with a place like HVAF, that community and that home is very well felt. And I want to um, tell you guys thank you for everyone who's purchased a whiskey and cigar pull. I'm just going to head to the page and check in on how we're doing on that. Um, we have from the whiskey, oh, we are completely sold out from the whiskey pole premium package. And on the cigar pole tickets, which are each 20 bucks, we have seven remaining of those. So that's really awesome. And um, sales for that will close at 8.30 PM. There's some other stuff on there too that you can purchase just individual cigars or um, tickets, anything like that. And masks, um, glasses, they're all on there. So sales will close at 8.30 p.m. and you'll receive an email on Monday with instructions on how to collect your winnings. And our fundraising goal for tonight is 25K. Um, so we can check the scoreboard here and let you guys know how that's going. But there's also something really awesome happening tonight. There is an anonymous donor who's gonna match $10,000 tonight. So if we raise 10,000 tonight, they're gonna match it. And we're also still aiming for that big goal of 25,000 that I know we can do. So let's see if we can check in with the scoreboard here in a sec. Um, all right, so we're at 1,300. So we can do it guys. I know we can do this to support people that have kept America, America, all these veterans that have done so much for our country. Um, and we're gonna also do the first two raffle prizes right now. So everyone who pre-registered for this virtual event is automatically entered into the drawing. And the first prize for tonight is going to be um, a his and hers package with two red, white, and blue masks. And then the second prize is HVF blue camo hooded sweatshirt with a blue tumbler. And Eugene Cooper is going to draw the first two names. So I'm gonna hand this over to um, Eugene Cope, sorry. This is the first prize package for this evening. And there we go. Work. So drawing for us this evening is the uh, patriarch of the Copes family. This is my 89 and a half year old father <laughs> who has his own fan club here. <laughs> so he's healthier than I am, I'm happy to tell you. So Dad, go ahead and pull a card. Let's see who's gonna win tonight's first prize. Aaron Curtis. Aaron Curtis, are you out there online someplace? Aaron, Aaron Curtis is right here. He's fellow Cav veteran. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm out of the room and another Army guy wins? I think there's a, the fixes on here. I don't know. All right, well, you know, Army won 15 nothing tonight. You know, I just we're just going to keep winning. That's all it is. Until we get tired of winning, we'll just keep winning. In judgment to step out of the room, you should have known better. Aaron, congratulations. We'll get you your mugs and your masks. And that's a fine looking, that's a fine looking Stetson. All Thank right, you so much. Yeah. 
those of you that are in the military and you look at this camouflage pattern, I, I gotta say there seems a distinct Navy or Air Force influence <laughs> in the choice of this particular camouflage pattern, but nonetheless. This You're is welcome, sir. You're welcome. Hello. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, Robert, I knew you were behind that somewhere. That's why we're giving it away. <laughs> As a birdie says, that's Can you hear me? Right. It's got, and there's Navy. Hey, our sympathies. That's a, you know, there was a game today. Somebody should have told Navy so they could show up. I don't, I don't know what to say to you. <laughs> okay. So wow. Wow. All right. Well, whoever whoever lost was going to be mocked mercilessly all evening. That's just the way military folks are. So we got a mug and a hoodie coming up. And add bullets to Ron Patterson. Ron Patterson, if you're out there, unmute, come on. Ron Patterson. Eighteen sixty-five. Hence, I got those same laser lights in my yard that shine through my windows. So you have good taste. When I was when I was still flying helicopters, Vince was my uh, favorite weatherman in the uh, Air Force uh, weather flight. Uh, other than you didn't always give me the weather I wanted, you just gave us the weather you had. You you realize next weekend is Army Air Force, so we're on. <laughs> Go Air Force! We got, Go. We, got uh, we got Emily here with us tonight. Okay, what happens next? <laughs> I, I Go back to Sarah. Here we go. You can steer yourself in the direction. So thank you, Eugene and Brian, for that. And the winners, uh, you will receive an email on Monday about getting your prizes. And you can also buy your own HVAF swag at the online store. It's hvaf.org-store.org. And also, the link will be provided in the chat. There's awesome stuff like these masks. These are the two things I got. There's this one that has Mary's flag kind of colors on it. Pretty cool. And this one's the camo. They taught me. Right, right. Um, so, check out the store. There's shirts, there's hoodies, there's a bunch of stuff there. Um, also, if you haven't uh, already, now it is time to light up those cigars. All right, I'll give you a few minutes. And also, fill up that drink because we are about to have a cigar with our CEO in the whiskey room. Hand it over back to Brian. The moment none of you have been waiting for. All right. So, <clears throat> Lauren here, for those of you, had we had a live event, and some of you recall this from last year, uh, it's, it's many military traditions is at the end of, not at the end of the evening's festivities, but there's a moment in the evening's festivity where the smoking lamp is lit. And it's traditional even for non-cigar smokers to at least participate. So some of you remember from last year, but had we had a live event, we were going to have a smoke camp. We had uh, donated 76 cigars, um, as well as a uh, custom band. So that's out there as part of the cigar pool. So one of the things we offered for those that um, are novitiates uh, or newbies uh, to smoking was simply some gentle coaching. Um, these things, whiskey cigars, these things are much better when enjoyed together. Uh, so rather than mock or ridicule people who don't know the, uh, uh, you know, the finer points of cigar snobbery, uh, I'll show you a couple of things this evening um, as we would have. So uh, we'll start with basics 101. This is a cigar. Okay. So this this is the foot. That's the that's the end that you light. This is the the head and shoulder. That's the part that you put in your mouth. I learned the hard way um, when I was in Afghanistan and shared cigars with some of the Afghan leaders that I met with. Um, the 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 knowledge that you don't pull cigars into your lungs like you do cigarettes 
is not universal knowledge. You only puff them in your cheeks, you don't pull them into your lungs. So typically this one with the uh, sort of pointy end on it um, is called a torpedo. There are probably <coughs> a dozen different kinds of cigars. They have different names based on the length and based on the, the girth. Uh, the, the girth is known as ring gauge. Uh, a 64 ring gauge is one inch. So everything below that is in one sixty-fourths of an inch. So in order to, to smoke it, you clip off just enough to where you can get to the shoulder. There you go. You start that. So um, I, I have a butane lighter. You use you can use butane, don't use propane because it'll spoil the taste of the cigars. Or if you're really, uh, you can get sulfur free cigar matches so that the sulfur doesn't, uh, uh, doesn't mess up the taste. Now, for a typical cigar of this size or larger, uh, you're going to toast the foot of it. Simply means you sort of get it warm, sort of get it started. There you go. All right. There you go. Okay. Yep. Just pull in. In there. And, I tried. And, it's, and it's just that easy. Um, I'm being told I need to do it again in front of me. Okay. From the audience. Okay, well, draw on it. Yeah, now what I did when I, when I, you draw it. When I pull it around and blow on it. All that does, you can see the, the, uh, the glow of it and you can tell whether you have the entire foot lit or whether maybe you only got half of it or two thirds of it because you want it to get started so that it'll burn evenly. Most cigars will be a little rough for the first half an inch or so. The flavor really kicks in at about a half inch to more. I will tell everybody it is like beer and whiskey and wine and everything else. It's an acquired taste and you just try it over time and you find out what you like and what you don't like. And cigars range from mild to robust. Um, some could insert the word harsh in lieu of robust, but if you like cigars, that's the right word to use is robust. Just, just like a strong beer. So. Awesome. All right, well, thank you for that tutorial, Brian. Um, <laughs> we'll I'm probably gonna have to have you repeat that a few more times, <laughs> and then uh, then I'll be good to go. I'll be on your level, right? right? Um, but yeah, so this time, um, if you guys don't know who I am, I am the HBAF marketing and communication clerk for Carpenter, and uh, yeah, I'm here with Brian. Here having a cigar and chat with the CEO. So um, I have a few questions I want to uh, ask you, Brian. So you know, we had to cancel the real operation of uh, have it virtual, which I'm so glad that we can do this. But um, why, so why is it important to you that we continue to have this even um, on the virtual platform? One, to get the word out about who we are and what we do. Um, I, I didn't have any reservations about going virtual. I think uh, any of us that are in the business world and, and, and to a, a growing degree, even in our personal lives, are getting accustomed to video chats, whether that's Zoom or Teams or GoToMeeting or Facebook Live or uh, FaceTime, or there's, there's all manner of virtual platforms out there. So folks are becoming in, increasingly familiar with uh, virtual events. Um, what was interesting to me after we, uh, after Ashley and our external affairs committee really headed up by uh, Arnie and uh, Rick, who were smack talking about the Army Navy game there from the VFW, um, was it, it honestly has expanded our reach uh, as each of us have shared it with our networks, both on LinkedIn and Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and whatever other platform you may be on. It really has expanded our reach and provided an opportunity uh, for folks to participate um, who, who couldn't or wouldn't have participated in a live event. Uh, but it's important for us to continue to simply expand our brand um, and, and maximize the number of folks that are able and willing to help support our cause. 
to support homeless and at-risk veterans in Marion and the surrounding counties. And the, um, the need this year has, uh, has increased. Are you getting ready to ask me about that? Yes. <laughs> yeah, no, because you know, obviously the reason we had to cancel because of COVID, and I know probably everyone on this uh, screen right now has, everyone has multiple ways that COVID affected us this year. Um, but how specifically has it affected the veterans in our community? For, for us, the demand for basic needs, and for us that translates into food, clothing, and hygiene items, uh, particularly food, uh, has increased. And when the lockdowns began, uh, the stay-at-home order went into place back in March, um, the demand from the clients we serve went up and the donations went down. Uh, and understandably, uh, folks look to themselves first, no criticism there, uh, but we were greatly blessed uh, that we found a number of partners who stepped up um, and increased and expanded their food donations, um, and some began offering monetary donations, uh, which allowed us to target uh, the foodstuffs that were in highest demand uh, by our veterans. Um, not surprisingly, and, and we went from where routinely our past practice had been that we allowed veterans uh, both food and clothing requests once a month. Uh, we increased that to once a week uh, and continue to do so today. And uh, much like uh, probably all of us and everybody we know uh, began to stockpile a few things, not the least of which was toilet paper. Um, but we all began stockpiling a little bit of food in the house. Well, that same instinct uh, was inherent in the veterans we served. And uh, so we had veterans coming in weekly uh, and, uh, and getting foodstuffs. Um, we are fortunate that we have uh, strong partnerships with Gleaners Food Bank and with Second Helpings. Um, but what happened, and many of you, probably all of us experienced this, uh, the demand across the nation uh, outstripped supply. So even people who wanted to support us and even uh, the monetary donations that uh, would enable us uh, to buy the foodstuffs in highest demand, the supply wasn't there. Um, and so all, all, we, just, we just worked diligently to get what we could, where we could, when we could, uh, and continue to meet the need uh, for the, uh, the veterans who approached us for help. Yeah, it's been awesome to see what all we've been able to do and how we've been able to adapt and uh, change, you know, our different strategies and all of that. So what do you think then 2021 is going to look for us? <laughs> if you can think of that. Um, I have a high degree of confidence in predicting that 2021 will be as unpredictable as 2020 has been. Um, and, and anyone who thinks they could prognosticate um, is fooling themselves uh, and probably not the people around them. Um, <clears throat> I think we will continue to see an increased demand. Uh, part of the reason that it was important for us to go virtual and conduct this event, while programmatically our housing programs um, are, are essentially fully funded, um, but those grants that allow us to house veterans don't allow us to purchase food and clothing. And so that particular demand um, is under-resourced. And so the proceeds from this event primarily uh, go to meet those, those basic needs for our community center. Uh, our community center consists of essentially the food, clothing, and hygiene pantry, uh, the computer lab, which is open to uh, any veteran in the community, not, not just our client, and the same with our food, clothing, and hygiene pantry. It's open to any veteran in the community uh, whether they're a client or not. Uh, we were fortunate last year through uh, someone who volunteered as part of a group who knew somebody, who knew somebody at Comcast, and unbeknownst to us, uh, nominated us for a grant through Comcast. And we were fortunate that Comcast awarded us a, uh, a grant for what they described as a digital rally point. Uh, rally point's a military term for where a unit just comes together uh, sort of regroups, rebriefs, and, and continues operations. And so the funding they provided us has enabled us to uh, buy 10 new computers and workstations, um, as, uh, and, and we're partnered with Comcast 
uh, and our internally our employment team uh, is taking the lead on developing curriculum uh, to be delivered uh, to veterans in the community, uh, primarily workforce development related uh, curriculum, uh, professional development curriculum, as well as just enabling uh, veterans who have no other uh, means to connect, uh, to stay connected with family and friends, do uh, resumes, do online job applications. All right, I got it, Bernie. I'll speed it up. <laughs> so finally home production here. Um, and then we have a, a USO-like hospitality room uh, that was uh, renovated and continues to be supplied by Farm Bureau Insurance, uh, all, all of which are open to every veteran in the community. Uh, but much of the proceeds this evening directly support our community center and our outreach efforts uh, to, to veterans in need. Awesome. Thank you, Brian. And we know that we couldn't do what we did this year without you guys. And we now continue our mission into 2021 and beyond without you guys. So uh, if you can right now, you can uh, donate on our event page. Um, help us get to our goal. We would appreciate it so much. And we know our vets would too. Now, before we move on to the next thing, I have to do this. I'm going to put us in gallery mode. Now, if everyone can, okay, most people got their cameras turned on, right? Now, I'm a millennial, so I'm going to do what millennials do, and we're going to take a selfie with everyone. How's that? Sweet. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, you're stuck there. You want to get in there? <laughs> okay, well, okay, the, the, the woo gals jump in there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's stay in shape here. Here. Alright. One, two, three. Perfect. <laughs> all right. Awesome. Okay, Good. so now now the moment you have all been waiting for, uh, Bernie Cruz. Isn't oh, it? Oh, no, not yet. Not next. Oh, yeah. No, but the look on your face was priceless. So, uh, <laughs> now, right. uh, more about what we have done in 2020 to help our veterans through COVID. Here is a video with more information. biggest effect from COVID is everything being closed down and HVAF has helped me get hold of the people that I need to get hold of and do everything that I need to do while still staying safe and staying virtual. symptoms, but I did quarantine myself, and if I needed anything, I'd just text them, and they would get what I needed. very first things that we got was an award from the United Way of Central Indiana. They just sent money out to really all the providers to say, hey, we recognize COVID is wrecking what you're doing. Here's some money. Use it as best you can. And that was a huge blessing because, um, you know, at the time uh, we did not have uh, any other additional funding coming in and we were scrambling to try and figure out how to adapt in this uh, climate and so uh, one of the first things that we did was we went out and we purchased uh, food cards uh, gas cards and we started paying for hotel stays for some of our veterans I'm, I'm 
Um, I welcome them back with open arms. I'm excited to see everyone come back, volunteers included. Um, just being able to provide this dignity back to them is a very important to us as well as the veterans. Thank everyone for helping out, for continuing with their donations, monetary, material, it doesn't matter. Everything that we receive in our pantry gets redistributed back out to our veterans. So thank everybody for helping us at being able to do what we do on a day-to-day -day basis. video and each VFS done so much for veterans prior to the pandemic and especially during this pandemic when you know Americans especially those that have protected our country needed it so much and I've seen the work that they've done firsthand I was familiar with the organization when I first moved to Indiana just about a year and a half ago but I've covered them extensively at channel 13 and one of the first stories I did was a van donation they received a wheelchair accessible van and what was amazing was even before the wheelchair accessible van, which was the first one they had, they used to pick up the uh, veterans that are in wheelchairs and put the wheelchair and the veteran like in the van themselves, even though they didn't have a wheelchair accessible van. That's the type of organization HVAF is above and beyond for our brothers and sisters. And I mean, we're so blessed to have them here in Indiana. It's really amazing. Um, some of the other stories I've done is Patriot Fest, which was an awesome like party and fundraiser. But the cool thing was it was in the middle of a pandemic, but it was outside. There was food, there was music, it was a celebration. And even though it's not like that hands-on kind of assistance, it was an assistance for everybody's just mentality and psychology in this pandemic. You know, kind of like this event is right now too. We're all able to hang out here even though we can't be you know, right next to each other, it makes a big difference. And we've laughed here. I mean, that's, that's great to see people smiling, see everyone drinking a little, having fun, unwinding amid all the stress that's outside, we can kind of just forget it. And that's again, another example of the type of family HVAF is. Um, there's also a ride along I did with Rodney, who is an awesome guy. He's outreach for HVAF. Um, he was at one time homeless and he's a veteran. And the cool thing was, we're doing the story, I'm riding along with him while he's going out to visit people. But then I'm sitting in the passenger seat and somebody pulls up and is like, hey Rodney, and he's talking to him and he's like, it's good to see you. And I kind of film a little bit cause I'm like, I don't know what this interaction is but maybe it will be part of our story. And it turns out that was a veteran that HVAF helped who has now had his own car, had a job, his family's all taken care of, everything's good, he's back on his feet. And that's just living proof of the type of organization they are. And that's why I'm so honored to host and be a part of this tonight because their work actually does make a tangible difference. And all of you guys who are supporting, you guys are making a difference too. And it's just amazing to see that kind of thing. Um, they have an urban garden, which is really cool. The veterans said that it was a way that they could learn to grow their own food, but it also has like a therapeutic impact. That's just another example of one of the amazing programs. Also, Mark Nicholson, um, he was homeless in the first two years of law school, he was homeless. And this guy just got named 2020 elite lawyer. And he is he was helped by HVAF. He credits them for getting him back on his feet I mean, just an amazing story. And he said one of the biggest things was having a positive support system that believed in him because he said when he was in that hole and kind of at the lowest in his life, and that's what he's described that time period as, he was living in a tent on Meridian. He said he knew that he had to make a conscious choice to have a supportive and positive group around him because you can always get the people that are like, oh, nothing's going to work, just give up. But he said, I need to have that positive support system that tells me you can push through, you can make it, times are tough, but keep struggling, keep doing it. And he said, that's what HVAF is. And you can see that from all the positivity we have here tonight and the amazing work that they have continued to do. Um, so let's talk about the money that we're raising tonight, right? That's why we're all here. We're doing an awesome job of it. So 
We'll check in on our scoreboard here in a minute. Um, and just a reminder, we've raised some money, guys. I'm so proud of everyone. Okay, so we're at 1,775 right now. And remember, we have an anonymous donor that is gonna match $10,000. Our goal is 25,000 tonight. Um, and you can help us meet our fundraising goal on the event page. And you can help us get to those goal, the 10,000 that we're gonna be matched with by an anonymous donor and our goal of 25,000 for this. Um, so now we're going to head to that moment we're all excited about. Does everyone know what that is? You guys have a have a little clue. It is your money. <laughs> it was pre-recorded at Hotel Tango's Foxhole event space earlier this week and led by the master of ceremonies, Burn Dog, Bernie, <laughs> who's uh, Bernie Cruz, who's HVAF vice president for support. So let's check out that video. Thanks, Sarah. Some of you may recall I had a co-host last year, Jimmy Mad Dog made us. Well, he made fun of my sweater vest, so I didn't invite him back. Due to COVID, I'm flying solo. But now that the formalities are over, fundraising goals been stated, sponsors recognized, cigars smoked, the video has warmed your heart, let's get down to the second most important event of the night, our annual Grog Bowl ceremony. Since we've done this before, many of you know what this is about. Ceremony, history and alcohol. The historical component usually describes a unit's lineage. I know for you, for you Marines, that's a big word. It means something like family tree. Uh, some other mandatory, they use it at some other mandatory fun event. This oral history carries forward the legacy of the unit and serves to inform and inspire each successive generation. The alcoholic component, consisting of many and varied spirits, wines and beers, reflects a tradition of service members being restricted from drinking except during sanctioned events. Even today, service members deployed overseas are prohibited from consuming alcohol in most theaters by the well-known and hated General Order No. 1. Although we are mindful that many veterans struggle with alcohol, there is no denying the centuries-old tradition of military service and celebratory drinking after conquering enemies. There are as many variations on the ceremony narrative and grog ingredients as there are military services and units. We hope you like ours. This ceremony, the grog, is meant to be lighthearted and somewhat funny. I know the first year I emceed, we recognized the history of battles fought by US forces. The next year, we recognized various branches of service. This year, trying to keep it different and informative, our focus tonight is to recognize and highlight the variety of services HVAF provides to our homeless and at-risk veterans. There's no intent to diminish the sacrifices of our veterans tonight, but more of an effort to inform you, our supporters and donors, about what we do and how we help the veterans that come through our doors. Well, now we are just starting to let them in our doors again. We had to temporarily close our lobby due to COVID and had to conduct outreach from the front porch until just very recently. Additionally, in a public display of shameless but sincere appreciation for our sponsors, we'll use this ceremony to showcase the spirits donated for tonight's grog ceremonies. Because without the spirits, our grog would just be punch and a whole lot of sugar. Another recent COVID-related change is just as you are watching virtually, we are going to pour virtually, meaning we're going to pretend after conducting a thorough COVID transmission risk assessment, we've decided not to pour the alcohol. Also, and pretty importantly, since all of you are watching virtually and couldn't join us tonight, it wouldn't be fair for us to hog it all. Plus, the hangover would last for days. We also didn't want all these fine spirits to go to waste, so tonight our pourers will simply highlight the bottle and set it in the grog bowl. If you're playing along at home, now would be a good time to take a stiff shot of whatever's in front of you since here's another sucky change COVID has forced upon us. In order to showcase the variety of services HVAF provides, I'm gonna to try to put them in somewhat of a logical order, starting with finding a veteran on the street all the way to attaining self-sufficiency. The first section to highlight is our outreach coordinator. This is a one-man show. It's a small team. Our outreach coordinator drives the streets, walks the camps, interacts with the homeless, to identify any of those on the street who may be a veteran and entitled to our services. Once found, our coordinator builds a rapport 
and tries to talk them into coming into our programs. In 2019, our outreach coordinator made contact with numerous homeless people. Through almost detective-like investigations, he was able to make contact with 71 homeless veterans, almost six a month. So let's begin pretending to add ingredients. Pretending to add blue punch to represent the bitter cold our veterans experience during the winter months and a can of dirt that our veterans constantly sleep and live in is our own outreach coordinator and 20-year Navy veteran, Rodney Jackson. Rodney's been with HVAF for five years. Just for you newbies out there, the dirt is actually brown sugar. Bell Tech Logics, a four-star four sponsor, is now virtually pouring in some of Hotel Tango's vodka. Unfortunately, vodka is often found in abundance in our homeless camps. Now that we have found the veteran, the next step is to get them some food and clothing. Our food pantry served 53,116 pounds of food, plus or minus a few ounces, in 2019. The food is either bought with cash donation, grants, or brought in by the general public or other service-oriented organizations. On a side note, if you'd like to conduct a food benefit benefiting HVAF, look up Ann Phillips on our website. She'll hook you up. Our clothing pantry runs totally on donations. Many of the same service-oriented organizations run clothing drives for our organization numerous times throughout the year. We usually have something to fit most everyone. However, one item that is usually in short supply is undergarments and socks, since it has to be new and still in the package. Just as a side note, now's a good time of year to donate cold weather undergarments. Thermals, long johns, wool socks, those items are always short during the winter months. In 2019, we distributed almost 35,000 pounds of clothes. Our food and clothing pantry served 888 unique veterans last year. Representing the food and clothing pantry is none other than Katie Zachary. Katie's been with HVAF for nine years and is the backbone of our food and clothing pantry. Katie would normally be adding sugar to represent the sweet feelings our vets have when they get a couple bags of groceries from our pantry. She would also throw in a big bottle of orange punch because, well, we just need to add a little more non-alcoholic liquid. Or you could say orange is the color of some of our fruits that they're able to get occasionally. Our three-star our three star corporate sponsor for the food and clothing pantry is the Vespa Group. We are adding in limoncello to represent the sour feeling our veterans feel when they have to go for long periods without food. After we get the veteran enrolled in our programs and some food and clothes, we next turn to finding them a place to stay. The largest department within HVAF is our operations department. They provide life-changing wraparound services for all veterans, active duty, National Guard, and reserve members, regardless of discharge status. Operations is staffed by 500, I'm sorry, uh, 50 caseworkers. Sometimes it just seems like 500. That number seems to be growing daily. The caseworkers are the heart of our organization. They deal with our veterans day in and day out, sometimes 24-7. The caseworkers ensure our veterans get every service and benefit they're entitled to. They break down barriers, counsel, console, and advocate for all of our veterans. Throughout our 11 transitional houses, we maintain 168 beds. Last year, our caseworkers provided service to 1,438 veterans, and we provided permanent housing to 459 veterans. This year, we transitioned five properties from transitional to permanent supportive housing, meaning our veterans pay a small amount of rent, but sign a lease and the unit is then rented to them. This switch allowed us to serve and house more veterans with families, something previously made difficult. Not pouring red punch to represent the blood, sweat, and tears our dedicated caseworkers put into our veterans is Elaine Lewis, a peer mentor at HVAF for over 14 years. Sponsoring rep from BRC, a three-star sponsor, is pretending to add a can of Sun King Osiris Pale Ale. Pale Ale, since some of the things they see on a daily basis will make you turn pale. Next, we need to find our veteran a job so they can begin to attain self-sufficiency and reintegrate into society. Luckily, HVAF also provides this service, and we do it quite well. Our five-person employment team works with numerous local agencies and employers to get our veterans good-paying jobs. They hold job fairs, resume writing, and interviewing skills classes to help our veterans get back in the workforce and well on their way to establishing self-sufficiency. 178 veterans found jobs through our employment team in 2019. Setting down a can of green punch and a little more sugar is Kiara Walker, 
an employment coordinator for HVAF for about four and a half years. The green punch represents the color of cash our newly employed veterans will make, and the sugar is just because it's sweet to have a job. Also, we pretend to add a little rum. We didn't think the other alcohols were enough. Adding the rum is three-star sponsor from Carpet Values, Rob Flanagan. Once a veteran has a place to stay, they are well taken care of by our world-famous support team. The support team keeps the water running, the heat and AC functioning, appliances working, and ensures the units are furnished and numerous other handyman duties. In total, we maintain 17 different properties and our headquarters building. We do that with a team of only seven maintenance technicians. Luckily, they are well led. We also have a transportation team to take veterans to doctor's appointments, VA appointments, and just about any place the veteran needs to get to to be taken care of. Holly Schrank is adding a can of motor oil on behalf of our transportation fleet. The motor oil is actually honey, so relax. And a can of Upland Wheat Ale. Holly provides cleaning services for our headquarters building and Veterans Villa. You see Holly everywhere in the building. Sometimes she's actually working. Actually, Holly does a great job maintaining our building. Adding another can of Blue Punch is three-star sponsor from Old National Bank, Leanne Lawler. Leanne is an Army vet herself. The Blue Punch represents many of the cleaning fluids, hand sanitizer, disinfectant, and numerous other items we use to keep our buildings clean and COVID-free, as well as ensuring our building is presentable for our veterans. The next group is certainly one of the most vital parts of the HVAF team, our volunteers. Literally hundreds of volunteers conduct a variety of tasks, sorting donations, stacking cans, date stamping food items, laundering clothes, beautifying properties, painting, the list goes on and on. You name it, our volunteers do it all, all in the name of supporting our veterans. We have really missed the help of our volunteers as we were forced to operate without them during COVID. Due to procedural changes and some significant structural changes, we are slowly opening back up to better serve our veterans, just in time for the holidays. We're happy to have their, our volunteers back in the fold. A resolution by the United States Congress in 1964 declared bourbon to be a distinctive product of the United States. Our volunteers give HBAF the distinction of being the largest provider of services to veterans in Indiana. So we think it appropriate to have a distinctive volunteer, Pat Berger, a longtime volunteer with HVAF, pour a distinctive bottle of Hotel Tango bourbon. Pat represents the hundreds of volunteers who give their valuable time to make HVAF a place veterans trust for top-notch services. Pat is also a Vietnam Marine Corps vet. He has volunteered at HVAF for over eight years. Thanks, Pat. The sponsor for the volunteer team is Ed Choice, a four-star sponsor. They are, adding, they are adding Hotel Tango Gin. Moving on, we're almost done here, folks. Of course, no organization can conduct the myriad of operations we perform without a headquarters. Our headquarters is the brain trust of the operation. <coughs> uh, our VP of strategy looks long range, gets us in the best position to tailor services to meet current and future veteran needs, as well as stay relative politically and professionally, as well as organizationally. Our human resources department ensures we attract and hire motivated, talented, and engaged directors, staff, and partners. The finance team pays the bills and manages our grants. And then there's our CEO. All he's done the four years as CEO is take us from a $4 million organization to $7.5 million, got us a $5 million mortgage, got our $5 million mortgage paid off by an anonymous donor, put us in position to receive a $5 million Lilly Endowment Grant to name but a few laudable accomplishments. Other than that, we're not sure what he does. Pouring on behalf of our headquarters is our own CEO, Brian Copes. Brian is not pouring a bottle of red wine donated from the wine group. The wine represents the constant wine we hear from his office. Why isn't this done? What do you mean you don't know? Don't confuse activity with accomplishment. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, sorry, that was my outside voice. Uh, <clears throat> pouring red wine is our, chairman, or is our CEO, Brian Copes. The red wine represents the fruits of the extremely hard labor and deep thoughts of the headquarters team. <clears throat> I think I just threw up a little bit in my mouth. <clears throat> also, along at home. I'm hearing all this for the first time. So. Also, as is a tradition, 
pretending to pour a bottle of their own Hotel Tango whiskey, is founding sponsor for tonight's event, Ginger Barnes, Vice President of Operations. Normally, we conduct a taste test to determine if there are any missing ingredients or alcohols. I'm pretty sure we covered all the alcohols. Hopefully, you're playing along at home and making your own grog. If you did, now's a great time to conduct your own taste test. Get a little groggy and then get out your wallet and make a contribution to HVAF, if you haven't already. Thanks for playing along, and we hope you learned a little bit about our organization. Take it away, Bernie. Sure. All right, ladies and gentlemen, now for our toast. So please stand, charge your glasses, as we prepare to offer five specific toasts. An appropriate response after each toast is simply to say, raise your glass and say, here, here. The fourth toast is a silent toast. And you'll know that's a silent toast because the presenter will say a silent toast. So after that, we'll have a moment of silence. So our first toast for this evening, toast number one, Tony Vespa. Tony's our HVAF board chair and three-star sponsor and a Navy veteran. Here, here. Tony. Here, here. Here, here. To those serving today on in harm's way while we enjoy our freedoms. Here, here. Here, here. Here, here. Here, here. Here, here. Here, number two, Robert White, our community HVAF community engagement director and Air Force veteran himself. Here, here. Here, here. Here, here. Here, here. Here, here. Once you want to go, here, here. If you don't want to use, we can use them downstairs, and then after that, if you don't want to go away. Wow. So, on the cloth of our nation. Here, 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 here. here, here. Oh, here, here. Here, here. Toaster number three is Diana Ashmore. To the families and friends of those who serve, you may have, you have met, never worn the uniform, but you served and sacrificed. Here, 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 and a representative of three star sponsor, Old National Bank. A silent toast to our fallen comrades and those missing in action, and our heroes who did not come home. Is Carrie Hunter, a representative of our four star sponsor, Ed Choice. A toast to the homeless veterans and their families and those at risk who we serve every day and the whole reason we gather tonight. Here, here. Here, 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 here. Thank you both for that. Um, that toast was pretty awesome. And it was great to see everybody coming together like that. That was really beautiful. And let's see right now, it's your last chance um, to purchase your whiskey or cigar pull tickets. Sales are closing at 8.45, so you have about, about 10 minutes. Um, in terms of the whiskey pull premium package, that's completely sold out. Those are 100 bucks. And the cigar pull tickets, we only have three tickets remaining. They're $20 each. Um, so you'll want to get that. You have about 10 minutes or so to do that. And then let's check in with some of our watch parties right now. So the first one we're gonna check in with is Diane Markle. She's HVF uh, board member. Let's see how that one's going. Hey, Diane. Diane, you're up. Hopes, how are you doing? We are doing well. How about at your end? Are you in your garage? It is a super secure remote site. That's where we're at. I'll tell but if I were to rob somebody ever in my life, your garage would be my target tonight. <laughs> I've never done anything like that in my life, but you know what? <laughs> so, so thanks for uh, thanks for checking in with us tonight. So I'm downtown Indianapolis. Uh, I'm at my girlfriend Lindsay Ray Snyder. I'm at her home. 
we're here in Fountain Square. Um, I'm drinking tonight um, out of, I'm not even sure. Honestly, just to have an excuse, I'm drinking out of a West Point ring ceremony uh, pitcher from 2003. Yeah, when I attended uh, the ring ceremony. Uh, so that's what I'm drinking out tonight. Uh, there's that. Uh, and Lindsay is drinking a Maduro brown ale. Maduro like brown cigar. ale. Yeah. It's delightful. So sh we're sticking with a cigar theme. We went to blend this morning and picked up our Davidoffs. So we are living it up tonight. I'm getting in the whole HVAC spirit. Um, we've got our coins from last year to be sure that we're in the spirit as well. Making sure we're representing and getting excited uh, here in our our home. Um, and you know what? We're having a good time. I, I love this event. I'm excited about the whiskey pull. Um, I bought my ticket, so I can't wait to see what I get to uh, receive. I'm very excited. I have a few neighbors down in Saddle Club that purchased some cigar tickets. So I know they're excited uh, to see what they receive as well. So we're living it up. I hope everyone's having fun tonight. Guys are like the cult super fans. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I even have the cigar box with the red, white, and blue confetti, and I'm not even being funny. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, I'm wearing a camo dress, and I've been in this all day because I had a I had another nonprofit event earlier today, and I was like, wow, I'm not sure if this is good. Or if this is sad that I am non-profiting my entire Saturday. <laughs> That's all good. Well, yeah, it's yeah, it's well, thanks for choosing <laughs> army theme camouflage pattern. I appreciate you representing. Well done. Uh, uh oh, we lost we lost your we lost your voice. I think the pink cheetah adds a certain level of um <laughs> ridiculousness dimension dimension and ridiculousness to the camo dress <laughs> back to don't ask don't tell it's okay it's okay it's good god love you coax <laughs> <laughs> thanks diane absolutely was that an hvaf challenge coin that was so cool yep that is so cool oh. yeah sarah yours is in the mail I <laughs> just got so excited. I love the collection. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so, Brian, I think we're going to check in on another watch party. I think it was with Lee White, um, who's with Bosma. And Bosma is an organization that's based in Indiana here. Wonderful. And they hired visually impaired blind. I've never seen it. Jonathan Butler. They were doing all the gloves, packaging the gloves, and some other PPE for the VA hospitals, which is really cool. So Bosma also gives back um, to our veterans as well. So we'll check in with Lee White here, his watch party. Lee, are you with us? Hello there. Hey. Hi. It's going great. How about you? Good. Well, hello, General. Hey, General, how are you this evening? General Cokes, it's good to hear your voice. It's so good for you to join us this evening. And my deepest thanks to Bosma Industries for uh, coming in last week. Uh, hey, we uh, we were happy to do it, General. We love our veterans, and we uh, we love what you guys are doing. Of course, I have uh, a couple favorite employees there at HVAF. Um, you being one of them, and then of course Robert, my my fantastic hero son, uh, who served. Oh. Oh, Robert, you're muted. Thanks so much for the donation of masks and sack lunches last week. And I, I told you, President, we have met when I was out. Yeah, Jeff was excited to come over and visit with you guys. Um, you know, obviously, he is uh, is a hero in his own right. And uh, 
every day we think about what we do at Vosma and how it supports our veterans across the country. Um, and we just absolutely love what we do. Um, thank you guys for putting this together. We're up in Fishers celebrating, uh, talking about what we can do to help better support our veterans across the country. And uh, just appreciate being a part of your event this evening. Lee, we couldn't do what we do. We couldn't. <laughs> okay. Uh, we couldn't do what we do without the continued support of patriotic donors like, like you and, and the leaders at Bosma. Thank you so much for supporting this agency and the veterans we serve. Well, we're happy to do it and we'll continue to do more and just, uh, General, just reach out to us and let us know if there are some other things that we can do to help support your cause. Indeed, we will. Thank you so much. Okay, thanks for having us, guys. Hey, happy holidays to everybody. Thank you so much, Lee, and happy holidays to you, too. And then I think now we're going to check in with James Perkins with Kroger. James, are you with us? Mr. Perkins, you're up. Sorry. Thank you, Kyle. Sorry. Oh, I apologize. I had to get off mute. But I had my daughter tell me how to get off mute. Uh, as I logged in. <laughs> <laughs> as I logged into this, I realized that I'm under my other daughter's account. So Kennedy, the boss, is not my real name. Just we're all on the same page. All right, cool. Yeah, all but right. now you told on yourself on who's the actual boss in your household there, buddy. <laughs> we all know. I am. We, God we love you. I'll say prayers for you, buddy. Amen, sister. <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> uh, so first of all, thank you guys for having us here, man. I really appreciate it. Uh, blessed and humbled um, for you guys to, to you know, like, just to do this. This is an amazing feat in the society and the, you know, the social economy we're going through um, and still to be able to pull this together, man. I know last year um, I had a great time. It was phenomenal. Still got my grout. That badger, that badger. There he is. There's my man. Who got it? Put your grout up if you got it. An updated cup though. We got, we got sexier ones this year. Yeah. Okay, so I wasn't on that list. That's cool. We'll talk offline. Um, so <laughs> I do appreciate, man, like everything y'all do and everything y'all, y'all pushing for and working for, um, uh, again, like I said, just blessed to be a part of this situation. Uh, I got my girl, my, my baby girl with me. Say hi. Hi. She's excited to be here, um, and be a part of this situation, man. Hopefully, uh, in the next coming years, like we'll all be able to do this in person. Um, hug, shake hands, you know how we do. Um, but from the Kroger standpoint, man, whatever you guys need, man, please, please do not hesitate. We love you. We appreciate you. Thanks for all you do. Look at that sexy grog right there. Brian Davis, get it. Love it. Love it. Put your grogs up. Appreciate all you guys do, man. Thanks for your support. Mr. Perkins, our deep so much appreciated. Yes, sir. Let's go. Let's go. How do you put it back on me? Put it back on me. <laughs> um, I think we have another check-in here um, from one of my coworkers. Let's see, I think. Do you have that? No. Oh my goodness. <laughs> My favorite. <laughs> hey, Bernie, or should I say Burn Dog? And hello, everyone from HVAF. I'm Angela Buckman from Channel 13, and I thank you so much for inviting me in this evening. And thank you, thank you, thank you for what you do for our veterans. Uh, they need our help. 
um, and we're happy to help them anything that they need. So thank you for, for what you do for our veterans. Uh, I wish I could say the 60s we've had the last couple of days are sticking around, but they're not. If you've been out at all today, you know the weather pattern is changing. Uh, a little cold tonight and even colder tomorrow may actually have a few flurries in that Sunday forecast. Again, thank you, HVAF, for having me in this evening, and thank you for what you do for our veterans. And Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and health and happiness, we hope, in 2021. For those of you that, at home that don't know, uh, Bernie's a huge fan of the weather. <laughs> she does weather? <laughs> Are you saying I got competition? <laughs> yeah. Well, Vince, you've got a face for radio. That's what I would say to you. <laughs> I resemble that remark. <laughs> Did you know that was coming? No, I, I, I heard rumor, but I had nothing official. You lied. <laughs> Lauren said somebody that used to work with you. Sort of. Where's Sarah? I'm here. I love you guys. Just the, <laughs> this is just awesome. Just the vibe and how everyone's laughing and joking. I love this. So um, let's check in on how we're doing in our fundraising goal right now. And I also want to remind you guys that we have that 10K that an anonymous donor is willing to match. So right now we have 2,350. Our first mini goal is 10,000, which our anonymous donor is going to match. And then our overall goal is 25,000. I know we can do this. Share the link with your friends if they weren't able to join our little Zoom party here or Operation Alpha. Share the link with them. Continue to donate. Um, you can also buy commemor commemorative, sorry, canteen cups and masks that are on the event page. There are also cigars. And then for anything that you do purchase or any of the winners, keep in mind that you'll receive an email on Monday about how and where to collect your purchases um, and winnings. And we're going to do the last of the raffle prizes. Anyone who pre-registered for this virtual event is automatically entered. So let me tell you what the first prize is here. Um, so the first prize will be a party pack. Oh, there it is. I'll, I'll just hand it to you. You tell us what's in there. <laughs> so the party pack, you get the commemorative canteen cup, a uh, couple of cigars, the top secret grub bowl recipe, uh, two commemorative Operation Alpha masks, and a package with a cutter and some hand rolled cigars some hand rolled cigars from Ybor City near Tampa. So that is that is the next prize package. And it goes to Tom Vlasic. Tom Vlasic, if you're online on mute and check in. Tom Vlasic. Ah, okay. Hey. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, wish uh, Navy had done a little bit better today, but uh, we'll get you next year. <laughs> yeah, we had to let him win. Yeah. I just told you you're eating some uh, of Tony Vespa's. You Navy vet as well? That's correct. Yep. I actually work for Tony, so uh, we uh, we keep it in the family here, but uh, we'll we'll get you next year. We'll get, 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 get to even it out a little bit. And for Tom and any of the other winners tonight, don't forget to wait for that email you'll get on Monday on where and how to collect um, your winnings. So let's do a quick check-in right now with HVAF's board vice chair, Arnie Peterson. Arnie? Well, thank you very much, Sarah. I appreciate that. Good evening to everybody. And we are at the American Legion up in Zinesville, Indiana. I've got a fellow board member with me, uh, Rick Penny. Hey there. And we, we've got about a dozen people up here. We're having a great time. And I just want to impress upon everybody the, the real big importance here to be able to pull out that checkbook, get online, get on your cell phone right now, go ahead and, and get this going so we can hit that $25,000 goal. Here's why you got to do it. And I'm going to share a couple of stories with you. These are very important stories that, that will really help you to understand. And Sarah had shared one that I was going to share tonight, and that's okay because I got a bunch of others I want to share with you. 
So the, the, the first one's a, a fellow by the name of James and some of the HVAC folks already know who he is. Uh, James, I met uh, several years back when we were doing some, some meals out at uh, Warman Place several years back. And uh, he, he happened to be a, a Navy vet, came back to, to Indiana, got his degree in engineering. Everything was going great for James and uh, got married, had a family, and then something happened, bad thing. And all of a sudden, lost his job, lost his family. He was out on the street. And thank God for HVAF of Indiana because he came off of the street. He got the help that he needed. And then he became a peer counselor at HVAF of Indiana. And today now he works for the VA and he is able to, to help uh, all of our veterans that uh, are going to the VA. And that's a great story. Got another story, a guy named uh, Eric, uh, who uh, was uh, in the Cold War uh, era and uh, came home, was running a business. Everything was going great. And again, one of those things, something happened. And then he was out on the street. He was all by himself. Uh, again, HVAF stepped in to help out and got him off the street, right? And uh, he went through our program, went through and, and got all the help that he needed to get. He is now out on his own. He's back reunited with his family and praise the Lord that he is reunited with his family because that's a big, big deal. And these are great stories. And folks, I tell you what, this is why you want to be donating to HVAF of Indiana because we want to help our veterans, our men and women, that had raised their right hand and said, I'm gonna write that blank check. Some of these folks have come home and, and just situation after situation happened and they need some help. And this is what we're here to do tonight is we wanna help them out. We've got a $25,000 goal. And I gotta tell you folks, I know we can do that tonight. Let's, let's get out there, let's get on, on that app. Let's go ahead and start uh, putting some money towards that goal so that we can help each and every one of these men and women who absolutely deserve and need our help. Thanks so much. Arnie is 100% right. We can definitely reach that goal tonight and I know we can all do it. With those of us that are on this and please feel free to share the link on all of your social media platforms. You can do it from your phone or your laptop while you're sitting here enjoying this so that they too can donate and know where to where to send their money and their donation. Uh, so um, let's review how we are doing on the fundraising right now. Um, we can definitely reach that $25,000 goal and you guys can continue to donate on the link. So right now we're at 2,850. Uh, for the first 10,000, we have an anonymous donor that is gonna match and we're gonna get up to that 25,000. You guys can definitely continue to donate after this event, but I think we've done really well so far during this event. So if everyone, you guys want to do a little clap here? I think did an awesome job. Um, so we also want to thank our sponsors because that's what made this event happen and their sponsorship is what allows HVAF to continue to do some of the awesome work that they're doing with the veterans that are homeless and veterans that are at risk at home of homelessness. So I just want you guys to take a look at some of these sponsors. Um, for veterans that I've spoken to who have been uh, helped and supported through HVAF. They say it gave them a home, it gave them confidence, it gave them a, that belonging, that family again. And I've met so many veterans that have been back on their feet, are doing amazing things because of that support. So this is, this is just a way to say thank you to all the veterans that have basically, these are the brave people that make this the land of the free. You guys and the veterans that are on here, thank you so much for your service. You have done so much for this country. Just by simply saying, you are willing to sign up to risk your life for this country. Whether you've been deployed or not, you are a veteran, you have served this country and we are forever grateful. Thank you so much for everything all of you have done out there. And to the wives and to the family members of veterans, you guys have served just as well. Thank you as well. Um, so thank you guys so much for joining tonight and for supporting hashtag who's your heroes. You can continue to follow HVAF on, they're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, their blog. And if you follow on social media, they'll continue to provide updates. I wanna thank you guys so much for coming in and talking to all of us and for the support. It's been a wonderful night. Operation Alpha is awesome. And just everybody, the way the community has been tonight, 
I can only imagine what it's going to be like next year, God willing, when we're all in person and partying and raging together and celebrating our veterans and the amazing work that HVAF does to support them. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, Sarah. Hey, if everybody will uh, just join me, if you can figure out how to do a thumbs up out there. But Sarah, thanks you, thank you uh, for supporting this event, for being a part of it. Um, we, we couldn't do. You can see the influence that our cause has uh, when we're able to get talent on the caliber of Sarah uh, to MC for us this evening, to get the first lady uh, to provide a video for us, and to each of you that uh, have stuck with us. My goal was 90 minutes. We're within an acceptable margin of error, just over the edge of that. But thank each of you for participating this evening, for your continued support in the past and, and now and in the future. We couldn't do what we do without the continued support of patriotic donors like you that are out there. And uh, thanks for your patience as, as we work through uh, the technical challenges of our first virtual event. And uh, uh, we're all looking forward to next year. And, uh, but we thank you so much for what you're doing in the here and now to take care of those that have served and sacrificed, worn the cloth of this nation, and the families and friends and supporters in that network that support those who serve. Thank you so much for what you've done and for what you're going to do for us in the future. Happy holidays. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Take care. Pua. Woo! Woo! Woo!